So I'm sorry there wasn't a ton of Norway content, but this cold that I have just absolutely crushed me. And uh, I am feeling better now. We're heading to the airport, and I actually have like a five day assignment in Wales with Visit Britain. So let's get to the airport. Made it to Cardiff, I'm in Wales. What am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing with my life? What am I doing in Wales? I'm here on assignment with Visit Britain. You guys might remember that, uh, I guess, a couple months ago at New Year's, I was uh, in Scotland on another assignment. With Visit Britain, this is essentially the same thing except for here in Wales. I have been so out of my mind, busy and sick, that I haven't had a chance to look over the schedule. All I know is I'm here commissioned to do some photos and a video for them. So here I am in Wales. It's after midnight. I should probably look at the itinerary to see what's coming up. But yeah, in the morning we'll get out and we'll explore Wales. We'll take some pictures and it'll be a grand old time. But for now, I'm gonna sleep. So I'm up and at it this morning, um, getting a bit of a late start, but it was a late arrival. If you're wondering, on these assignments, they usually kind of leave like a package, and then in that package, there's an itinerary. So I have this big itinerary, half a tree. It's like 20 pages with all the local information and kind of a list of locations they want you to scout out and check out. So day one, I guess is officially day two, I have three pages worth of locations to check out here in Wales. So uh, I guess we better get started. In that package, along with the itinerary, is usually some goodies as well. So there's like a tourist map for Wales. There's like a beautiful diary actually, the pen, and most importantly, a little bit of Welsh rum. Don't drink and drive, I'll save that for later. The day starting at a place called Tintern Abbey, which is really beautiful. It's right on the border of Wales and England, and it is, yeah, a really, really cool spot. But I'm not sure it's a photo location. And this is one of the battles you face a lot as a travel photographer, especially on assignment, is the tourism board or whoever's hiring you has all these really amazing places to send you. And they are amazing. Places like this are incredible. But a great location doesn't always make for a great photo. So you end up running around to all these different locations trying to find the absolute best place to shoot the pictures. So I've come here to the Abbey. I'm exploring a little bit, trying to maybe take some daylight snapshots. And then uh, I'm moving pretty quick. So one of the funny things about being a travel photographer, again, is as a tourist, you can spend a lot of time reading every single placard, learning all the history. As a photographer on assignment, sometimes you gotta just boogie. <laughs> so I'm boogieing around Wales today. Dating back to 1131, some 736 years before my beloved home country of Canada was even founded, Tintern Abbey stood strong here until the 16th century. But despite falling into ruin, the Abbey has been recognized by many artists and paintings, photographs, and poetry. And obviously, the artist saw something I missed on my first few glances. I definitely spoke too soon. This location makes for some great photos. But on a travel photography assignment like this one, you kind of spend the day taking snapshots while looking for that epic hero image to photograph at sunset. So I again hit the narrow roads towards my next spot on my Welsh photography scavenger hunt. And after a couple stops at cathedrals and the oldest inn in Wales, I made it to my next stop. I'm having so much fun just cruising around here, driving and exploring. It's been so much fun today. And I found another one of the locations the tourism board spotted out. It's kind of like being on a treasure hunt today of locations. This is Patricio Patricio. Um, church. It's way out in the countryside here in South Wales and it's really cool. Let me stay. 
After the church, I pushed my way through Brecon Beacons National Park and towards a place called Gospel Pass. I'm assuming the name comes from the dozens of churches and abbeys that dot the area, but as beautiful as they are, it's the driving here that gets me all wound up. I mean, is there a better place in the world to drive than Wales? Narrow, hedge-covered roads just wind through the green landscape and through the woodlands. It's a driver's paradise. So I've just driven over a pass called Gospel Pass, which was awesome, and I've gotten to another awesome place, which is Hay Bluff. But I gotta be honest with you, I am struggling. I always really, really, really struggle in places like this. Not because it's not beautiful or photogenic, it is stunning here. But I find places like Wales, at least in the rolling hills, I find it really hard to find compositions for photos. Because you just have all this open space. You just have so much space and it's really hard to capture that in one single frame. It's hard to show the rolling hills and the, the sheep and the trees and the fence lines. It's hard to show the twisting roads. It's, it's just a challenge and yeah, it's something I definitely struggle at. So to kind of combat that, I've just parked and I'm gonna go on a little bit of a walk, see if I can find a composition along this road. On a travel photography assignment, I'm always looking for relatable things. I'm looking for, you know, roads or houses or things that people can relate to. Quite often that's the big differentiating point between a travel image and just a, a fine art image. Um, I think this road potentially could work. It's really beautiful. I'm really hoping I don't need to climb all the way to the top of that um, little hill to get a different angle, but yeah trying to make this work This is a little bit of a tip if you our location scouting by car, get out of the car. Because it's so hard to see things from the car when you're driving. You don't realize how fast you're moving. You have a harder time seeing dimensions and things like that. So get out of the car. I wasn't out of the car and walking around for more than like five or six minutes and I saw something way down this hill which looks like it might make for a really good photo and it's just a tree. There's this beautiful old tree kind of leaning out into the view and I think it might be exactly what I was looking for. Never would have found it if I just drove around looking for shots. You gotta get out of the car and walk around a bit. I'm at the tree that I spotted and it's actually even better than I saw from the distance. You've got the tree kind of leaning over the valley and then these rocks in the foreground. So I think there's a lot to play with there. Pretty simple photo, but it's definitely a photo. I also think that from up here, there's some long lens stuff to do as well. There's a winding road there. You have the peaks off in the distance there, some trees up on cliffs that way. So I think this worked out. I think this is a really cool spot. So let's get gear set up and let's get shooting. So this is going to be a pretty simple photo I think. I'm just going to go wide angle, no filters, I might put a two stop medium grad on later. But I think I want to blow out the sky, I want to make everything look really warm and yellow. Because it's kind of how the scene looks, it looks really warm to the eye. And so I think that by blowing out the sky it'll really accentuate that. Uh, it looks like f16 and then whatever the shutter speed is going to be, a quarter of a second. And I want to wait until the sun gets right up on the horizon, maybe even sun star it out on the horizon. So I think this is going to work.
Okay, sunset just happened. It didn't happen the way I hoped it would. It kind of went behind some haze, but I think I still managed an image. Might not be the image the way I envisioned it, but it's an image and I'm quite happy with it. And I'm happy I found this tree. This tree was a lifesaver. If you've ever photographed a place like here in Wales, you'll probably have struggled just the same way I do. At least when you put the camera out on it, when you look at it, it looks unreal. And then you put the camera on it, it doesn't look as big or dramatic. So finding a, something like a tree or a road or some sort of foreground element, it just saves the day. It adds depth, it adds scale. And yeah, so I'm happy with the tree. I'm happy with the way the day went. I think I got at least a couple images for uh, Visit Britain out of today, but there's definitely gonna be more images coming up. I have like five full more days here. I don't know how many episodes I'm gonna make from that, but it should be fun. There's gonna be lots of photo making and exploring here in Wales. So I hope to see you guys on the next episode. Peace.